Good morning, and welcome to Mountain View United Church's online worship service for February 7th, 2021, the fifth Sunday after Epiphany. I pray that we'll all feel God's Holy Spirit moving in us and among us and around us as we worship. I pray that you will be blessed by this worship today. Come, let us worship God. Please join me now in our responsive call to worship. Is anyone here feeling tired? Take heart, God gives us strength and energy. Is anyone here hurt or grieving? Take heart, God heals broken hearts. Is anyone here short on cash, pinched for resources? Take heart, God's reward is free for the taking. Is anyone here left out, shunned, or outcast? Take heart, God is calling your name and waiting to gather you close in love. Amen. be our song no one stands alone standing side by side draw the circle wide God the still point of the circle round whom all creation turns nothing lost but hell for Draw the circle wide, draw it wider still. Let this be our song, no one stands alone, standing side by side. Draw the circle Our hearts touch our horizons, so encompass great and small. Let our loving know no borders, faithful to God's call. Draw the circle wide, draw it wider still. Side by side, draw the circle wide. Let the dreams we dream be larger than we've ever dreamed before. Let the dream of Christ be in us. Open every door. Standing side by side, draw the circle wide. Let us come together as one as we join in our opening prayer. Let us pray. Holy One, with our ancestors and all the people of God, 
we gather to sing your praises. You are the one who has created the cosmos and the ants. You give food to whales and sparrows, name the stars, and count the hairs on our heads. Compassionate one, we offer you our thanksgiving for your many blessings. Powerful one, inspire us this day to turn our praise into action, to share your good news with those who long to hear a word of hope to proclaim your message of peace and justice throughout the world. Praise to you. Amen. Jesus heals Peter's mother-in-law. Mark 1.30 Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told Jesus about her. Simon, also called Peter, was one of Jesus' disciples. One day, Peter came to Jesus and told him about his mother-in-law, who was very sick. Mark writes, Together, they went to her bed where she lay with a terrible fever. Jesus reached out and gently took her by the hand. With his touch, the fever suddenly left her. She was healed by the miracle touch of Jesus. Everybody ought to know. 
Our Hebrew scripture this morning comes to us from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 40, beginning at verse 21. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see, who created these? He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen. Our New Testament reading is taken from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Chapter 9, beginning at verse 16. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward, but if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation I may make the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though I myself am, am, am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. Amen. Our gospel reading is taken from the gospel according to St. Mark. Chapter 1, beginning at verse 29. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. 
That evening at sunset they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring town so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. In the past month or so, I've shared with you some of the details surrounding my call to ministry. That call was one of the most difficult decisions I've had to make in my life. And I've told you how I finally reached the point where I honestly couldn't see myself doing anything with my life except for ordained ministry. Saul, later known as Paul, was faced with a similar decision. Now, I know that Saul's decision was much more serious than mine. He had spent his adult life persecuting Christians. Now he was going to do a complete about-face and spend the rest of his life preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Of course, few of us are struck blind on Mountain Road, and have Jesus speak to us. But perhaps it was the circumstances of that conversion that made Paul so passionate about the gospel. I'd like you to take a minute now and think about what it is in your life that you are passionate about. I know a lot of you are passionate about music. Some are passionate about quilting, others scrapbooking. For some, it's exercise. For others, it may be children or grandchildren. Laura Bartlett writes, Proclaiming the gospel is not optional, says Paul. That seems like a no-brainer. But how many of us intentionally fill our lives proclaiming the gospel? The gospel message is chock full of the good news of love, not just any love, but the love of the everlasting God. This is the one who created the earth and the heavens, who provides sustenance, strength, compassion, and healing for all creatures, and who takes delight in those who place their hope in the tenacious and tender power of divine love. How can we keep quiet in the face of this amazing truth? Because Paul is so passionate about the gospel, all his activities center on making the gospel known to all people, and his writings are saturated with this passion. In fact, his entire lifestyle is about giving witness to the love of Jesus Christ. Our passage from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians begins with Paul explaining what ministry means to him. When ministry is going well, it is fun. When the going get gets tough, he doesn't give up but continues because sharing the gospel is his calling. He is compelled to do it and he is willing to give everything for the advancement of the gospel. Grace Pack writes, Paul is passionate for the good news of Christ and is resolved to share it with all people, 
regardless of their theological stance, value system, racial and cultural background, or whatever other distinctions there may be. Paul shares insights about how to share the gospel with others, whether they are like him or different. To start, and this is critical to understanding Paul's evangelism, Paul sees people as who they are and where they are and accepts them as they are. You see, Paul is willing to meet people where they are and connect with them. He is intentional about connecting with everyone as they are rather than waiting for them to be like him or demanding that they change so as to meet certain criteria. Jesus met Paul on the, his way to Damascus. On the way toward violence against the believers of Christ, if Jesus waited until Paul's practice and heart were changed, Paul might never have connected with Christ. Thus, Paul says, I act like a Jew to the Jews. I act like I'm under the law to those under the law. I act like I'm outside the law to those who are outside the law. I act weak to the weak. Diversity is the reality of our world. Inclusion is imperative. It's God's great mandate for the church. Paul then says, I have become all things to all people. To reach and connect with as many people as possible. What Paul describes as having empathy, the ability to understand and share another's feelings, or having the willingness to put oneself in another's shoes. Eugene Peterson translates the text appropriately in his Bible version, The Message. I didn't take on their way of life. I kept my bearings in Christ, but I entered their world and tried to experience things from their point of view. For Paul to go from having a set of beliefs customs and culture specific to his context to becoming all things to all people means he had to put in extra effort and work to share in others experiences and to understand others who are different from him in many aspects believe it or not empathy is hard work it's not sympathy. Empathy is to understand and share others' experiences and their point, points of view. And it means that you have to set aside your own familiar thoughts and perceptions to make room for new encounters and understanding others. You have to suspend judgment and open yourself up to diverse ways of seeing and experiencing the world. For Paul, all of this hard work is worth it because empathy creates the space necessary for getting to know others and to build relationships. Empathy opens the door to love as Jesus loved and to sharing the gospel. No one can connect with others unless there is a genuine sharing of feelings and a mutual understanding of each other's experiences. But merely having a heart open to accepting others as they are, and the empathy to understand and share others' perspectives are not sufficient for Paul. He undergirds these interactions with extreme servant leadership. I make myself a slave to all people Paul's choice of the word slave indicates a profound servanthood and humility. The focus is solely on the other and their needs, not on the one who serves. This means giving of oneself without any recognition or restitution. Paul's passion is Jesus. 
His desire is to be a partner of the gospel. Why? Because this is what God has done for him and for each of us. God came to us and loved us first before we knew God. In Christ, God comes and embraces up us where we are and as we are through Christ coming down to our level and accepting us as sinners. Jesus showed his love for us by giving up his life for us. For Paul to be a partner with the gospel means to do for others what God has done for him. And for Paul, it has become a passion. Let us pray. God, open our eyes so that we can see all your people. Open our hearts so that we can embrace all your people. And open our lives so that we can be the good news of Jesus Christ to all your people. Amen. Let us come together in our offertory prayer. Let us pray. God, you have created the universe. Everything we see has come into being because of you. Your glory is beyond our comprehension. Yet you give us the most precious gift imaginable, your everlasting love and faithfulness. With great joy, we now offer our own gift puny in comparison, but given with grateful hearts that belong to you now and always. 
We are thankful for the opportunity to put these gifts to work, proclaiming your gospel of love. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him. prayer time this morning and the coming week I'd ask you to continue to keep in your prayers Janice Gallagher Audrey Gauguin and her husband Des Amy Stackhouse Jim Moore Winston West Shirley McDonald Let us come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Beloved God, who enfolds the earth with a blanket of snow and who enfolds your people with warm and loving arms, we lift our hearts to you. O God of the cold nights and brittle days, who makes the winds blow and seals the waters flow, what, who breathes upon your people with your spirit and carries us through the water of baptism to life eternal. We now lift our lives to you. O God of light, shining in deep shadow, before whom the northern lights dance across the sky and wave their shimmering torches in festive celebration, enjoying their God and enjoying themselves, we join with them in praising you, O God. You have raised us from the dust to share your life. Grant that we may never refuse your gift and may always possess that life. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who shared with you in the act of creation and who came from you to claim us forever. O oh God, kind creator, life giver, we bless you now and forever. And we offer these prayers in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. shelter of our Lord who abide in his shadow for life say to the Lord my refuge my rock in whom I trust and he will raise you up on eagle's wings bear you up breath of dawn make you to shine like the sun and hold you in the palm of his hand the snare of the fowler will never capture you and famine will bring you no fear 
under his wings your refuge his faithfulness your shield and he will raise you up on eagles wings bear you on the breath of dawn make you to shine like the sun and hold terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day. Though thousands fall about you, near you it shall not come. And he will raise you up on eagle's wings, there you are breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun, and hold you in the palm of his hand. For to God's angels is given a command to guard you in all of your They will bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And he will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun. As we all leave this sacred space, wherever you may be, may you go with your eyes wide open to see those who are different and invisible. May you go with your ears trained to hear different languages and sounds. May you go with your hearts and arms spread open to embrace those who are different, for they are God's children and your brothers and sisters. And in your openness, may God's love be experienced by all who are in your path. Amen.